Right. So when we have full information, extremely straightforward. The problem for us is that we very rarely have full information unless we're inside the firm. So if I'm a McKinsey consultant working for this firm, I could absolutely have the perfect operating tax rate. If I'm a management team, again, have the, have the exact operating tax rate. If we are investors outside the firm, we're gonna have to come up with some workarounds. Because typically, if we're investors outside the firm, we face a problem of limited disclosure, meaning we don't get all that information. In fact, all we get is what's called the consolidated income statement, which was that far right column, right? which combines all the foreign revenue, all the foreign costs. It puts lists amortization and interest expense without telling us in which jurisdiction, tax jurisdiction, those are booked. It lists the gains on asset sales without telling us that that was sold in the foreign subsidiary and so those that revenue is taxed at the foreign rate and not the domestic rate. And then it only lists reported consolidated taxes that include, but don't list, by the way, notice on the income statement, don't list the tax credits, the, the one-time audit revision, the R&T tax credit. So the reported taxes are considerably lower than our, uh, and, and these are our effective taxes, so our effective tax rate here, the, the tax rate is considerably lower than the statutory rate. We don't know how this combination works. What we are often provided is something called the tax reconciliation table. This is going to be over in the footnotes, somewhere in the 10K, we'll have to go dig it out. And the, the tax reconciliation table tells us how we get from the parent statutory rate, so that here the parent is the domestic subsidiary. Their statutory rate is 35%, they're US based, to the effective rate, right? So 35% is the US rate. The effective tax rate of 25.5, that's what the effective rate is. So that's 395 million in taxes right there. That's, that's how we calculate the effective rate. Now, the, the rest of the entries in the tax reconciliation table tell us how we adjust the effective rate for all of these tax credits. So we are gonna pay 5.3% less than 35% taxes because some of our income was earned at a lower rate. And we will pay 2.6% less than 35% because we get an R&D tax credit of 40 million. And then we're gonna pay 1.6% less because of this one-time audit revision credit. So if we subtract all of those percentages from 35%, we get 25.5. So we're gonna to have to use these two tables in conjunction uh, to try and back out what income was earned where and what the operating, the appropriate operating tax rate is. Now let's look at an example here of a simple firm with a simple income statement here. Starting at EBITDA, they've got amortization, they've got earnings before interest and taxes, they pay some interest. They have a gain on asset sales, meaning they sold an asset for more than what it was listed on their books. Uh, then they have some earnings before taxes, then they pay their uh, taxes, and then we're followed by net income. And side by side, let's look at their tax reconciliation table, which is a table typically reported in the 10K. Uh, it tells us how we get from the firm's statutory tax rate, which is the rate that they should be charged, in other words, the U.S. used to put charge the top corporate tax rate was 35%, so they should be paying 35% on their taxes. And it works its way through any adjustments to that tax rate to what we call the effective tax rate, which is what the firm is paying on their, on their income. So they have a statutory rate of 35%, but they have an effective rate of 255 so let's see what that actually means. Let's look at this reported tax rate. They pay $395 million in taxes on $1.55 billion in earnings. So if we divide 395 by 1550, right, I just cut off all the zeros, I get 25.5, right? This is the effective tax rate. Now, they should be paying a 35% tax rate. In other words, they should be paying 1550 times 0.35, which is 542 million and a half, right? 
So why aren't they paying 542 million in taxes and instead paying 395 million in taxes? Well, the tax reconciliation table tells us how that happened. So the way we do it is first, we wanna convert this cash, this tax reconciliation table to a cash table from a percentage table. And the way to do that is to multiply all of these percentage values by the earnings before taxes number, just like I did here. So earnings before taxes times the statutory rate gives me the cash statutory rate, 542,500,000. I can multiply 1550 times the foreign income adjustment, right? and we talked about this in the last chapter, because the firm pays taxes at a different tax rate in foreign locations, we may have some adjustment because of interest and uh, exchange rate changes. Uh, and so this is how we're denoting, uh, how, we're how the firm is telling us that they have a, paid a lower tax rate because they paid some of their uh, taxes at a lower foreign rate. So we can multiply uh, 1550 times 5.3 and we'll get uh, 82.5 million, so they paid less taxes because they paid some of their income was foreign. 1550 times 0 0.026, sorry that should have been, let me just rewrite that as 0 0.053. 0 0.026 gives me 40 million so they had some R&D tax credits that saved them 40 million off the statutory rate. And this is a kind of a common thing where uh, because R&D research and development typically comes with high paying jobs, in other words, you're gonna have scientists or researchers or whatever doing this research and development, uh, firms will get tax credits to locate their R&D departments in certain places because those places want the high income earners who would in turn be paying high tax rates. So they've got some R&D tax credits, and then they've got an audit revision. They got a one-time audit revision. They had, their auditors determined that they paid too much in taxes on a one-time basis. So they file with the IRS and they get a $25 million tax credit. And if you subtract all of those cash numbers, you get their effective rate here, 395 million. So this is how we use the tax reconciliation table to understand how we go from the statutory rate to the effective rate. But we can also use it to get a little more detail on what actually happened. Uh, and we can look at it from the insider's perspective too. Right? So if I'm an outsider, this is about all I can do. Uh, the firm is telling me what these things are. They're telling me what the adjustments are. I can make the necessary adjustments to try to calculate operating cash taxes. Um, but if I'm inside the firm and I'm trying to determine how these all get made, well, you can look at um, you can look at an example of what that looks like. So let's, for instance, let's examine foreign income adjustment here. So let's say this firm, the firm had foreign earnings. That's what they're paying the foreign taxes on. And they also had, and we wouldn't know this unless we were inside the firm or they reported it, this asset sale was on foreign assets. Right? So they had foreign earnings of 500 million. So 500 of their two and a half billion, uh, 500 million of that was foreign earnings. And then they had 50 million asset sale for a total foreign income of 550 million. Right? So the way we calculate this adjustment is we say if the firm were to have paid the domestic tax rate, the statutory rate on that money. Right? So if the firm were to pay the domestic statutory rate on that foreign income, they would have owed domestically Five hundred and fifty million times thirty five percent or a hundred and ninety two point five million in taxes. However, they actually paid the foreign rate.
and the foreign rate was only 20%. So they actually paid 550 million times 20% or 110 million in taxes. For a savings, right, the difference is a savings of 192.5 minus 110 or 82.5 million. So that's how we move. This is our cash adjustment here. If I was the inside the firm, I'd be calculating 82.5 divided by 1550, which is our earnings before taxes, to get 5.3%. That's the savings that I had, and that's what I put into my tax reconciliation table. So I can use this in, in, in another unique way if I'm outside of the firm, which is that I can work my way backwards to figure out the total of my, um, at least the total of my savings. And if I know where the foreign income was earned, I can work my way back to how much foreign income the firm actually had. And that's only depending on whether they report this kind of information or not. Now, we can do this in a, in a very effective manner if for some reason we know a lot of the information about where these um, tax deductions were earned okay, or where they were booked. So this is called the comprehensive method and essentially what the comprehensive method relies on is properly matching the non-operating items like amortization and interest to the appropriate tax rate. In other words, we want to be, we, this only works if I know that the domestic subsidiary was the, was the subsidiary that had the amortization and the interest because then I can, uh, I can match that to the domestic tax rate when I make an, an, and make an adjustment. If I don't know, or I don't wanna guess, uh, then this method isn't gonna work, right? But here's how it works. We start with reported taxes. We use the tax reconciliation table. Then again, we can look, uh, you can see how I calculate these cash rates in that example. Uh, so we use the cash rates here. So I add the, the yeah, use the tax reconciliation table to calculate the cash taxes. Uh, and so what I'm doing is I'm adding the non-operating uh, items here. So I add the audit revision. That's a non-operating tax credit to my reported taxes so that I get reported operating only taxes, 420 million. Then I know that to get up to operating level of taxes, which is EBITDA, I need to get rid of the interest tax shield, the amortization tax shield, and taxes on the gains of the asset sale. So that I'm back just at operating uh, income and operating taxes. Now, if I know that the amortization and interest were both booked at the domestic subsidiary, I can calculate the tax shield at the relative marginal rate, and I can remove the amount of taxes that we shielded with those two deductions. And I can add them back to the tax rate. And I can do the same thing with the taxes uh, on the gains of the asset sale. I pay 20% taxes because that asset was sold in the foreign subsidiary. So I can add 20% of that asset sale back um, and, and calculate that in taxes. And what I end up with is my operating tax rate, 760 million. Uh, and that gives me, an, and then I can use that 760 million divided by EBT, uh, EBITDA and get my operating tax rate. This is theoretically sound. This is totally reasonable. It relies on me recognizing where these deductions were booked. Now, I could make a strong case that firms would be uh, financially, uh, it would be financially unstable for firms to book amortization and interest in a lower tax jurisdiction. And so they should be booked in this domestic subsidiary, but that doesn't mean that the foreign subsidiary might not have some debt. And so then we'd be distorting this slightly.